So we wanted to start the show by wishing the Duke of Edinburgh a very happy 99th birthday. Well, there's a new photograph that's been released to mark the special occasion showing Prince Philip and the Queen in oh. the gardens of Windsor Castle. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have also wished Prince Philip a happy birthday this morning by posting two lovely photos on their Instagram. And there they are. And Clara's House have released this family photo of Prince Charles and Prince Philip. Let's have a look Here at it that comes. one. There you go. Look oh, at that. that's, that's so shot. sweet, isn't it? But as the Duke enters his 100th year while we're still in lockdown, how will the royal family be celebrating? Well, Camilla Tomini's joining us now with an insight to their big day. Good morning, Camilla. Lovely to see you. So mm. what, what, what are their plans? I mean, like lots of people that have had a lockdown birthday, this one's going to be a bit different to other years. Yeah, do you know what? My birthday's on Sunday and it's going to be very low key like this one. So normally um, Prince Philip doesn't make a fuss and he probably won't even make enough fuss next year when it's his centenary, right? But at the same time, of course, the Queen wants to mark it. So they're going to have a very low key lunch at Windsor Castle today. There'll be telephone calls with uh, loved ones. We don't know if there's necessarily going to be Zoom calls because I'm not sure the Queen and the DOV are across that technology, but certainly they will be speaking on the telephone to their nearest and dearest, including their great grandchildren who like so many people their age, they haven't seen in weeks, unfortunately. Mm. I'm sure there'll be someone there to set up Zoom for them. Join the meeting and put the code in and sort it all out and then just turn the laptop round, surely. I only say this because I got wind that there had been a plan for her to speak to Boris Johnson on Zoom and I don't know what happened but it ended up being on telephone so she's still in touch with the Prime Minister every week and other world leaders and most things have been done on telephone so and maybe that's just the way the Queen prefers it. Lots of uh, couples, married couples that have been together for a very long time are experiencing what it's like to be with each other constantly more than ever before. Uh, for these two, I mean they are in lockdown together obviously, is this the most time they've ever spent with one another? Well, arguably in recent years, yes. So they've been married for 72 years. And of course, in the old days, they used to go on tours together for six months at a time on the Britannia. So they, they're used to that close confinement. But at the same time, in recent years, since the Duke of Edinburgh announced his retirement from public life, he's been living up at Wood Farm in Sandringham and keeping himself to himself. The deal that they had between them is essentially, look, I'm retiring, but you're still queen. You go down to Buckingham Palace and do your thing and work, and I'll stay out of your way. And he wanted to enjoy his retirement and in peace, reading, going through paperwork, kept doing country pursuits that he enjoys. Obviously, when lockdown happened, they were both unexpectedly put together at Windsor. They were going to spend Easter there, but not this extended period. And they're there for the foreseeable future because Buckingham Palace is an opening this summer. They're safe there. They've got this very tight-knit group of staff around them called HMS Bubble, um, 22 members of staff who are effectively locked down with them. So, yes, it's actually quite nice in a way. It's a silver landing to this dark cloud that they are at least together when they wouldn't ordinarily have been this year. Mm -hmm. Did some, does the Queen send him a... 100-year telegram next year? Well, according to Royal Protocol and Convention, yes, she will. So, technically, he turns 100 next year. And interestingly, I spoke to Buckingham Palace aides this week because I wrote a piece of the Telegraph which is going in the paper tomorrow. They are planning tentatively the 100th birthday celebrations. The trouble is the Duke of York, uh, Edinburgh has said, I don't really want any trouble and I don't want any fuss. So how that's going to look, I think the big event, looking forward to the future, and let's do that because lockdown is a little depressing, is going to be the Platinum Jubilee in 2022. So tentative plans from the pipeline. But yeah, of course she'll give him a, a telegram because that's what she does when people turn 100. Let's, um, let's yeah. just concentrate on, uh, on a, a little bit of jewellery, the brooch, because this, uh, this is a remarkable piece of workmanship and history, isn't it? Well, it's also one of her favourite pieces, and she wears significant pieces of jewellery for significant moments, so dating back to the 18th century. It's connected to the tiara that um, Eugenie wore at her wedding, this brooch, so it's part of an extensive collection that's kept under lock and key. It's interesting that she's got it, because obviously usually her jewellery is all kept at Buckingham Palace, so in accordance with the fact that she's not doing any public facing, not that you'd expect the Queen to be dressing down, but clearly this was well thought out, the idea that they would pose for this photo Photograph on June the 1st and have that particular piece there as a, a memento of times gone by. It has been difficult for the Queen because her mantra has always been, I need to be seen to be believed. And so while she's carrying on with affairs of state and her red boxes 
at the palace, I think she really does miss that contact. She famously said, actually, when she used to go on engagements and see people holding up their mobile phones, that she misses eye contact. So I think there's this need for her to get back to normal. But of course, in accordance with the government guidance for her age, 94 now, she's got to take every precaution. But I think this morning viewers and the rest of us would just like to see all the royals back on the beat rather than on Zoom call, but we'll just have to be a bit more patient. Well, they've adapted remarkably yeah, well. Yeah, haven't they, um, Thanks, Kimela. Thank uh, we, we, we were talking about this earlier on because uh, it uh, had us reminiscing about the time that I was lucky enough to meet Prince Philip in celebration of the 60th anniversary of the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. I agreed to do a challenge, sir, uh, for, the, uh, for, for the awards themselves. I've, I'm going to wing walk. Really? Yes, for, for, for you, sir. <laughs> Well, see, who's trying to get rid of, of you? <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, I, I know this is a very a long and busy day. I, uh, You're going to stand there on a wing <laughs> saying, hello, folks. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I'll be saying or whether it's transmittable, but I'm going to give it a go. I wouldn't open no mouth if I knew. <laughs> 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 it's not like a balloon. It's a mouthful of bad bees. <laughs> He's a great cat. What was it like? What was he like as well? Well, he doesn't suffer fools. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't like being interviewed, so you can't ask him questions about himself because yeah. he won't talk about himself. But um, after I'd done the wing walk, uh, he was... It was at uh, Buckingham Palace, and he was absolutely remarkable because he was talking about past events. Look at my face on that. <laughs> um, he was talking about past events, and he could remember the weather on the days, and he could remember exactly what had happened. And this is, you know, this is 60 years before. Yeah, yeah. Um, he walked around and met thousands of people. Um, my feet were killing me at the end of the day. And he just jogged up the steps and, and back into the building. Amazing. Yeah, but he, as I told him that I'd done the wing walk, we chatted about that for a bit. And then he walked, wandered off. And someone said to me in the crew, he's beckoning you over. So, uh, so I walked over and he said, I wanted to introduce you to this man. So I said, oh, OK. And he said, he's jumping out of a plane. So you're walking on the top of it, so I thought I'd just introduce two idiots together. <laughs> uh, don't kill yourselves. Oh, that's a... <laughs> Bye! Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Remarkable.